It's a long tradition for folk to seek submission for a competition for several cracking lines. Look at Byron sitting round the fire and maybe partly inspiring. There is Frankenstein. He is wishing this is the spark, the ignition for one of the great compositions of our time. It's a Halloween competition. 666 words of pure exhibition. And all you got to do is listen to a podcast. And you could shine. You could shine. Well, here we are again. Welcome to the Failing Writers Podcast, which this week includes the phrase you'll need to use in your Halloween flash fiction entry. I wanted it to be, as his naked body slipped into a Volkswagen Beetle filled to the brim with pink strawberry custard. But the boys said, it's too specific and would be hard to put into most stories. I mean, come on, what do they know? Hello, everybody. Oh, Dave, you've got your excited ho ho on. <laughs> I have. Like a slightly tickled Santa. <laughs> I tend to say I'm excited every week, but this week I am particularly excited. Oh, he's excited <laughs> again, everyone. Of course I he is. am. Just, I can. Oh. It's, it's nearly clacking. I'm going to pop. I'm going to pop at some point because this is it. <laughs> this is the moment that we've all been waiting for, where finally our very first failing writer's writing competition. Is, is starting, lads. If you, if you can hear it this is. now, it's, it's on. on. Yep. So if you didn't know, it's it's a Halloween-themed flash fiction, 666 words challenge. A little bit later on, we'll tell you there's a phrase that you need to put in there. We will tell you that. And uh, Dave, do you want to give people the entry details? Yes, Tom, I will. <laughs> because um, I can't remember our email address, <laughs> Dave. What you need to, as Tom said, it's 666 words of uh, or less of flash fiction. You also said that. Said that. Themed around Halloween, uh, it doesn't have to be a ghost story or anything <laughs> like that. You know, as long as I it's, didn't say that, but that's a really good. That point, is a good actually. point, isn't it? You it know, can be if he wants to be spooky yeah. and scary. That's cool. Yeah, that's what you yeah. want to write. And also, I do love a ghost story, yeah. so uh, that'll be pleasing. Yes, just a just, quirky just little story about Halloween costumes or yeah, trick or treating pumpkins. pumpkins. Yeah. Maybe somebody who just happened to be born on the 31st of October. I thought you were going to say, who was born a pumpkin? <laughs> Maybe that's Don't want to it. give out too many brilliant ideas, actually. Stop it. Yeah, hold back. There are only three things that you have to do. One is make sure it's below 666 words. Two is include the phrase that we're going to give you shortly that has to be in there somewhere, otherwise it doesn't count. And three, Email your entry to failingwriterspodcast at gmail.com. And you've got a couple of weeks, haven't you? It's, uh, um, 28 days? The closing date is the 22nd of October. Okay, so it's not 28 days. 28 days yeah. when we announce yeah. the winner. That's right. Yes. Sorry. Uh, totally and wrong. all the details can be found uh, at failingwriterspodcast.com forward slash blog. And then we will be announcing a winner. Yeah in our podcast which we are going to move a day early Mm. so it's actually on halloween oh my god and you can listen to the winning story it might even be yours who knows in fact i'm almost certainly right in saying it will be yours (laughs) are you just talking to the one listener who ends up winning exactly that's right nice yeah 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 that's professionalism your story will be performed by some of the country's leading voiceover artists, uh, and you will be able to hear it right here on this podcast on Halloween. Guys, 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 we're going to have to go all the way back to the start and re-record this. Why? I haven't forgotten to record again <laughs> like uh, previous errors. <laughs> we forgot right? to mention there's a hundred pound oh, bloody prize. What? We didn't forget that, did we? I think we did. I don't think we mentioned it at any <laughs> point in right. that oh, whole thing. I think you're right. There's a £100 prize. There we that's go. That's quite important, it. really, isn't Don't it? Don't forget the limited edition merch as well. I mean, that, yeah. that, in some ways, that that's worth more than £100. T-shirts, 
bookmarks, all the stuff we've got left lying around that we haven't been able to get rid of in any other way. <laughs> Great prizes, wonderful prizes. And we just really love to hear what, what you've got to say, really. Yeah. And your story and just... Uh... Just have a go. I think that's our, that's the main thing, Definitely. isn't it? And also, almost as good as the fact you could win £100 is the fact that it doesn't cost you anything to enter. That's right, Birdie. It's free it's to enter. It's all totally free. So, uh, so send so, it in. So, chaps, are we ready to announce the phrase that needs to be included in the story? Yes, we yes, are. Yes, the big, the big the reveal. Big uh, I think we should have some okay. sort of fanfare before it, though. So let's cue the fanfare. Right, yeah. And the phrase is... It hit the floor with a thud. That's it. Those few words... Do you want to hear that phrase again, yep. people? One more time. That phrase again. It hit the floor with a thud. Those few words could win you the life-changing sum. You will need other words around it. But yeah, exactly. Some other words around Had it. it a bit, but yeah. Without those words, yeah. nothing else matters. It hit the floor with a thud. Go, right. We can't wait to hear what your thudding fall is. Yes. Could be all kinds could of be, things. It? Lots of things make a thudding noise when they hit the floor. But if you're thinking, oh my Lord, I've never really written a short piece of fiction before or... Oh, I don't really know where to start. Oh, I wish the guys would ask someone on the podcast to give some top tips that's an experienced flash fiction writer. Well, good news, people. Oh, very We've good news. We've got Tim Craig here, who is an experienced flash fiction writer, to give some top tips. Hello, Tim. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Thank you for coming on. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. You're more than welcome. More than welcome. Now, you've got a little bit of a history in success in flash fiction, haven't you? Uh. I seem to have done all right. Yeah, I mean, it's a short... It's time to, it is time to blow your own trumpet. <laughs> Thank you. That's very awkward. I don't particularly like doing that. But yeah, it's, um, I haven't been doing it that long, but I've taken to it. I, I finally found my uh, my writing home, I think. After, after many years thinking that I was going to be a novelist <laughs> and never getting past the first page, I suddenly realised... Well, that should have been a hint, really, shouldn't it? That should have been... It should have been. I suddenly realised I didn't have to get past the first page and uh, very much enjoying it and... It's a bit like uh, staring at the night sky and see, seeing more and more stars. The more you sort of get into flash fiction, yeah. the more you realise there are people out there doing it. Mm. And the more you realise uh, how many competitions there are and how many uh, online literary magazines or zines, as they're known, um, there are to have to get your work out Zines there. saves a lot of time. It does. <laughs> zines, you need every yeah. single count. Yeah, yeah. Saving, saving, count. saving work out, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is it is it like, you know, in the Olympics where they have runners that do different lengths and their speciality will be the 100 metres or the 10,000 metres? Do you have a, is there a length of story that you kind of like doing word-wise? That's interesting. I, I find that mine come out best at about 250 to 300 right. words. Um, I mean, flash fiction itself is generally accepted to be um, anything under a thousand words. Right. But that to me, mm. that to me is huge, <laughs> which obviously to a novelist, to a novelist, that's tiny, you know, but, but uh, to, to me, that's, that's, that's a heck of a lot of words, a thousand words. I've sort of already bored after about 400. So uh... do, you, do you think that's um, because of your writing upbringing, if you like, because you, you did what we all did, didn't you, writing radio ads? Yeah. Do you think it's kind of been hammered into you about that kind of I, short and sweet and keep it? I'm, I'm not sure which came first, you know what I mean? I'm not sure if it's became, yeah, because, yeah, I was, yeah. uh, because I was sort of, you know, the, the, the short stuff appealed to me or because I've got no uh, uh, patience or attention span <laughs> that I went into writing radio ads in the first place or whether... 25 plus years of writing radio ads crippled me for for writing anything else uh, yeah. but, but certainly the two uh, there are certain things in common let's say you mm. know that sort of concision and um certainly sort of having to whittle everything down to its to its yeah. essence makes yeah. it extremely yeah. difficult to write anything long because you know you, you're constantly reducing it and reducing it and reducing it and you spend a week and you've got three sentences um <laughs> so you know it would take me 400 years to write a novel so I, I kind of um I don't know as I say I mean it's the short answer but certainly there is a connection between the two yeah. things yeah do you find you're sort of drawn to shorter stories in terms of the, the things you like to consume as well as the things that you like to write yeah increasingly 
I think, again, do have to, have to draw the, a line between flash fiction yeah. and short stories. You know, there, there is a difference there and, and it isn't just about the length. They are different animals. I think one of you in the in the podcast I listened to the other day sort of just touched on it very briefly. And it, and it was like you were saying it as a revelation. You said it's almost like poetry and and there is a much closer uh, relationship from flash fiction to poetry right. than there is almost to short stories. And then again, from short stories to the novel, you know, the, there's something, it's not just a word count. Yeah. There's something that's, that's more kind of, without trying to get too sort of uh, pretentious about it, there's something more transcendent about, about, you know, what you're writing in a flash or a micro fiction um, that's, that's, that, that it has in common with poetry and certainly prose poetry. Um, you know, prose poetry and flash fiction are very, very close in nature. So it's almost like a kind of mindset you have to get into before you uh, attack these things. I think it is. And I think it took me just a while to get into that. And listening to the podcast of you all doing that New York competition, I could hear you slowly getting into that mindset. I think when I started off, it was like, oh, it's great. Well, OK, this is dead easy. I'm just writing a story in in three or four hundred words. Brilliant. I'll start. It's got a start yeah. and it's got a middle yeah. and it's got a whiz bang ending. And there we go. <laughs> it took me a while to tune into the fact that that isn't actually what it's about. Tim, I'm going to put us up for some, well, possibly some information we don't want to hear. But you're saying you listened to our Winch Fest episode yes. where we maturely discussed the judges' feedback um, yes. on our submission. Yeah. Yes. Were we, were we completely wrong or were we mostly right where would you put the marker on that? in terms of um what you thought about in feedback, terms of whether we were slightly hard done by or not i think there, i think there are a couple of things going on there i think that it felt to me like a little bit like the judges were phoning it in you know they 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 were obviously having to deal with an awful lot of um a lot of stories and it didn't feel to me that they'd given your stories enough <laughs> attention and i think they missed the point on a couple of a couple of things and there are a couple of places where I fundamentally disagreed with them and agreed with your fundamental disagreeing with them. Um, you know the bit about the old woman? That's you know, good. That, that little offline in the comedy? In, in Dave. Oh, Dave, yeah. Dave, that was great. Yes. We didn't need any further explanation. It was just Bloody a, old it was woman. Just a perfect <laughs> aside. And the fact they were saying we needed, you yeah. know, we needed her backstory was, was completely off the mark. We didn't need that. I think, mm. I think the sad thing about that was just the judge's very suggestion that we needed more backstory about the woman yes. was hilarious yes. and more hilarious than Dave's story. <laughs> I think that's exactly. what... <laughs> yeah. That was the that's real the problem, problem isn't it? of that one. Yeah. I sort of felt like they probably read through it and they didn't get an emotional hit from, from the story and so they thought, no, but now we have to post-rationalise that. Let's just you know, write some stuff down that, that shows that we've, we, that proves we've read the stories. It didn't feel to me that, that they understood where the stories were were coming from on the other hand i think with a bit more time the stories you know might have might have been made to work a little bit harder yeah i think it's in a sense it is a bit like radio ads i think all the parts were there in all of your stories there's nothing missing um you know it, it's like you know they were the right length mm. they had characters yeah. they had narrative you know they had action but I don't think they, and you probably would say this yourselves, um, I don't think they really sang, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. I think, I think, yeah. They, I think they, they were lacking soul. They I were, think, they were. They? I think they, were, they, they came from the head rather than mm. from, from the heart. And sometimes, yeah, you know, if, if, yeah. you, if you'd left out a bit more detail, and, and, and I think one of you said if we'd focused a little bit more on a smaller part of the story and made more of that rather than trying to tell a whole story yeah, yeah. you might have been a bit yeah, more successful that. that was my feeling they did they needed something to just make them just to lift them a bit there's nothing wrong with them mm. but in in a competition which is entered by you know as you said thousands of people then the judges are going to be that thing which does something different yeah, yeah. and something a bit special and, and as with radio ads, you can tell the radio ad which is which is solid and workmanlike, which does everything right. Yeah. So you can tell the one which maybe breaks a couple of the rules, but just delivers mm. something uh, a bit more memorable. And and that's difficult to put into words. So you know, I did have some sympathy for the judges because I don't know where I would have started with those stories, other than to say they were very very competent. <laughs> um, There's that word again. Uh, there it is again. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but they were very. But, you know, it was, your, it was your first stab at it. Yeah. So, you know, and you had a day to do it. You had a day to do it and you had you had life stuff to be getting on with as yeah. well. You know, you had yeah. kids, families. 
Tim, you say that though, but what what happened with your first stab at um, writing some flash fiction? I knew as I said that you were going to ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah, my first stab, I I accidentally won the Bridport Prize, which was. Uh, which was oh bloody hell which expect. is actually quite a big deal isn't it yeah so it was yeah, the first one in I terms wrote. of flash fiction it's like yeah yeah but it's all been downhill since then so you know it's um that's the worst possible thing that could happen isn't it because that means you think oh this yeah. is i must be yeah. really good at yeah. this yeah yeah i'm probably the i must be the emma rather <laughs> of, of literature you know i'm sort of <laughs> started off in you know, position 300 and, and i won a major and you'll never hear from me again sorry emma um, you're going to go on to a long and successful yeah. career i know you did are. uh did piers um, morgan have an opinion about your <laughs> yeah. no i was very lucky with that and that was great but then as we said you know i wouldn't write that i actually wouldn't write that story again now because to me it did a couple of things a couple of things wrong so if i was going to disagree with the judges in that case it would be because they made me win um <laughs> but it was like I, w I wouldn't write a story like that anymore because it, it it did a couple of things that i don't particularly like in a story um which it, it had a bit of a whiz bang right. ending on it and i don't particularly like those it had quite a, a sort of formulaic structure to it but it also shows that you're never sure what the judges are going to say, so it's always yeah. worth entering. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, this brings us on, Tim, to our, our question of um, hoping that you can kind of give some top tips for people that are going to enter our competition. Lovely. Of do's and don'ts, I guess, to some extent, isn't it? We've got yeah. a few. We've got a few more words than your uh, your typical um, sort of level. We've got six hundred and sixty six. Six hundred and sixty six for our words. Halloween contest. Lovely. I suppose if I was going to give tips on that i would say uh the first thing to do is to read a lot of flash fiction <laughs> you want to see right. what's out there and the good news on that is there's an awful lot of it out there now it's it's something that's really exploded in the last 10 or 15 years in in this country it's always been around but i think it kind of started off with uh, a guy called david gaffney who's brilliant and he yeah. wrote a book called sawn off tales and he talks very well about flash fiction and he's got an article that, that was, well, he was interviewed by The Guardian, and you can find that online. So he does a sort of top 10 tips on that that's, um, that's definitely worth a read. Yeah, not to be confused with it's Dean Gaffney, who with probably Dean doesn't have the same insight into the flash fiction world. Well, sure we never know. I've never read any of Dean Gaffney's uh, microfictions. <laughs> they, could be, they could be worth a read. But no, David Gaffney is, 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 is the guy to read here. But um, there are so many other great writers. There's Kathy Fish is brilliant meg pokras and there's a there's a book that's been recently released called going short an invitation to flash fiction by nancy stolman which i can also recommend so so read as much as you can so you you get a sense of what's yeah. out there um great uh, websites to, to choose from great sort of online uh, flash fiction resources are uh, the bath flash fiction award and I would say Smoke Long Quarterly is another good one. So yes, read as much as you can is the first thing. The next thing I would say is you are looking, uh, is not to think of it in terms of a whole short story. I mean, we, we, we sort of talked about this a mm. couple of minutes ago. Yeah. Not to, not to look at it as, you know, beginning, middle, and I'm going to write a short story, but hooray, yeah. I don't have to make it 3,000 words. I can only make it 666 words. That's not what, that's not what you're looking for. You see, as, as you contract, the story, I think you have uh, more of an obligation to uh, produce something which lifts out of the narrative and leaves the reader with something to think about. Does that make sense? So again, it's more that that link be with poetry, isn't it? Again, exactly. That, 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 I think yeah. that's what it is. You know, once you you know you really got to once you get down to, to to poem lengths, and obviously it's 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 so much about this this kind of transcendence. But I think in um, you know flash fiction is a hybrid. Um, between poetry and and prose, mm. I think that's a that's a really good tip in itself, to be honest, because I I'd not quite well, I don't think we quite put our finger on that. Yeah, but mm. it, as soon as you as soon as you kind of spelled it out like that, yeah. you kind of think, oh yeah, that is yeah. Does it? And like you say, it's really hard to to describe ironically in in a yeah. few words. But it is. This might be a really really uh, this might be a wanky way of putting it, but I, I guess it's a bit like no, it almost certainly is a wanky way of putting it. But it's, <laughs> I thought you were just going to hand over to John then, because that's normally his. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Over to Thanks, Pretension Tommy. Corner. <laughs> uh, but no, no, like a short isn't just uh, um, like a small beer, is it? You know, it's, it's, it's a whiskey is a thing of its own with its own soul. Um, you've you've got to look at it in a, in a completely different way rather than just 
it's a smaller measure of, of something bigger. I would agree with that, and I wouldn't say it was wanky. I think that's exactly the way to look at it. Oh, good. It's, it, it, it has, Excellent. It has a completely different um, character to it. I mean, people do bristle in the flash fiction community, such as it is, when people say, oh, this is great. Uh, you know, you only have to, you, you know, you can do it really quickly and move on to something mm. else. Uh -huh. um, you know, yeah. that's not really... And, and, you know, we all, as radio ad writers, uh, know what people say say to us or have said to us. Yeah. Oh, this is great. You know, so soon you'll be moving on to TV ads, won't you? And we get and we bristle about <laughs> yeah. that because because yeah. they are they are different things. And one isn't one. You don't you mm. don't start off with one as a, as a sort of the uh, the training slopes and then move on to the next. Yeah. yeah. It has its own very definite personality, and it's got a hell of a lot of really good people doing it who've got no who've got no desire to write a novel. Um, yeah. So yeah. They, they 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 specialize in. Yeah. That. And if you do it well, then you still need to come up with the characters. You still need to round them out. You still need to put them in a world that really exists. I was watching a video last night uh, of uh, Neil Gaiman talking about Roger Zelazny, um, who was a you know short story writer in the '60s, who apparently said to Neil Gaiman, "All my best short stories are the last chapter of a novel I didn't write." And my first reaction to that was like, uh, "Well, that's that's great because you only have to write the last chapter." But of course, if you're writing the last chapter of a novel that you didn't write, then in your head, you need to have kind of written the entire thing. Yeah. So you're not, you're not exactly. really There's always cutting a anything out. Cat, yeah. isn't <laughs> there? You sort of need to have done it anyway. I think it's one of Kurt Vonnegut's um, maxims, wasn't it? Come in as late as possible. I yeah. think that's, that's the thing I also heard you guys struggling with um, on the New York Fiction Challenge. You know, the, the sense of, of having to give out a ton of information to people, you know, in the setup. And of course you did, if you're going to do the whole story. Yeah. Uh, but if you decide... I'm just going to pick one moment to blow that up. Then, then you can dispense with setup. You can, you can go straight in. So you, yeah. you do want to come into a story as as, as absolutely as as yeah. late as possible. What else can I say? Well, I would also say, in terms of winning competitions, let's be cynical about yeah. this. Yeah. Um, I would say that if the judges are familiar with an awful lot of flash fiction contests, they will see an awful lot of stories surrounding things like uh, dementia and cancer very sort of dark stories like that and i would say because they're going to get an awful lot of stories like that then you, you really if you're going to do one you really need to make it stand out so i would avoid those subjects unless you've got a really particular take mm. on it i would also definitely avoid a whiz bang ending you know that's that's one of the first things that, uh, that they tell you about uh, flash fiction is you kind of want the ending to leave the reader thinking that perhaps the story carries mm. on a bit more somewhere else that's not to say it's unfinished but it, you don't want it to to wrap up like a like a radio ad does do you know what i mean you don't want that that, that sort of symbol crash at the end yeah that's interesting because a lot of short stories around the sort of i guess around thousand words or above tend to do yeah, that yeah. don't they They tend to have a, a whiz bang ending. i think they certainly did they certainly used to i think increasingly they're not so um, I, I would say the more right. modern ones, it's, it's kind of gone out of fashion. These things probably come in and out of fashion. Right. And currently the fashion is not to have, is not to have a big ending on, on, your, on your story. Right. Uh, I was just going to ask you, Tim, uh, in terms of what you were just talking about, do you think that applies across all genres as well? Do you think if you're, if you're talking about the, the, like the genre of horror, say, you still need to be doing the same things or comedy, uh, all, all those things still apply. I, I, th I think so. You know, um, and I thought I heard when you when you were given those themes the other day in this contest. I thought, oh, that's tough, isn't it? Horror, mm. because because you need a chill in there somewhere, don't you? Yeah, you need it. You need a chill in there, but you know, you you're immediately led into certain tropes, aren't you? Once someone says horror mm. to you, you suddenly get you suddenly get the you know the, the vampire teeth yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and everything else and you're leading two people to it with this six 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 words um i think you you want horror but you want but there are horror films and there are horror films aren't there there are some which are yeah. very much in your face and there are some which yeah. which work in a, just make you feel you know, uneasy or make you feel yeah. very uneasy it's it's sort of uh nightmare on elm street versus the blair witch project versus the grudge mm. or the shining there's there's a ton of there, there are tons of ways of of doing it and some stuff which is hinted at mm. so i think it's yeah it's it's it can be done with subtlety as well can't it rather than just mm. you know a mad axe not very good at subtlety that's the only problem yeah and i think with that with our competition as well we've said and um, it's it's not 
doesn't have to be horror, does it? Or it just needs to have it just needs to be linked to Halloween, and it can yeah. be a quirky little tale about something else. I think um, that's all. That's right. I mean, all these things should be should be rather than a cage to your creativity, mm. they should be a springboard for it, shouldn't they? Yeah, they should, yeah it's just a signpost, isn't it? Yeah, which, exactly. Which road you choose yeah. to go down yeah. is up to you to get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. So, Tim, you're going to be. Uh, you've you've said you're kind enough to help us judge. These, which from obviously our previous experience and what you said today i think that would be a very good idea uh, to, help, <laughs> yeah. to help us out so we can justify the winning entry um that'd be brilliant yeah um no really problems good. i'm really looking forward to reading the entries because we are actually yeah. we genuinely genuinely are like really just to see, being on this side of it rather than sending your stuff in you know you're just going to get such a a mix of different stuff and some will be scary some will be funny do you mean there's yeah. you kind of got all kinds of different and hopefully but there will be that one in there that you think, oh, wow, yeah. I think you're absolutely right. I've judged a few competitions um, now and, and the variety is, is staggering. I think you'll get just as much variety in a competition for yeah. uh, 666 word stories as you will for 80,000 word novels. Mm. There's so much variety and people approach things in 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 such a, a, yeah, exactly. an unusual way and it's great fun you, you, you click on the file and you just don't know what you're going to get and that's that's really exciting yeah i just have one more question though uh just yeah. so because i'm i'm a, on, well i'm a, just one more thing <laughs> my wife she bakes these cakes but i um i'm presuming that we're gonna get like a million entries to this sort of thing so obviously we're not gonna <laughs> dump a million stories at your door we'll have a little sift through them ourselves first a bit of prejudging. So what what are the sort of main things that we should be looking out for when it comes to assessing these wonderful stories that come to us? I would go with gut straight off. I would mm. I would say okay. I would just read it and 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 not get too hung up on about um you know the the the, the nuts and bolts of of story writing. I would come away with just can you ask yourself did this story you know again it sounds wanky did it move me but did it do something special did do i did mm. did it did it give yeah. me that that sort of yeah. warm glow you know you know don't you as soon you as you do. read it that it's going to be one that you, you're going to think about again tomorrow that's, that's exactly or while you're hanging yeah. out the washing yeah. you'll suddenly go ah oh, what if those people had done or oh, what was that yeah, yeah. So, so i would try as far as possible sort of clear your mind of out of everything i've just said and just go with your gut, go yeah, with yeah. Your gut. already already forgotten it good <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what what people yeah, come up with. Brilliant! Can't wait. Oh, what's the prize? What's the prize? Yes, so the prize is one hundred pounds of our own cash, plus, of course, the chance to have your story uh, recorded and broadcast by some of the country's leading voiceovers. Wonderful. I think that's fantastic, and is you know, uh, that's a money that's a money can't buy prize. I mean, right you could there. buy it if you just paid equity <laughs> rate. Yeah. Yeah, is, it, is it free entry or is it? So? Of course, yeah, it is free entry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we see, you say, of course, but an awful lot aren't. So I think that's brilliant. I think you know, a hundred pound prize for a free entry. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's very much in in, in line with, with the going rate. So excellent. You should get a lot of entries. That's really good. Crossed. Wonderful, guys. Thank you for inviting me on. No, well, thanks ever so much, for Tim. Really appreciate yeah, it. Well, I hope it's useful and um, good luck with it. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. Bye. Pleasure. Been great. Thanks, mate. Well, there you go. Well, wasn't some, some, that interesting? Some good top tips there. Some good top tips. There is no excuse for Very you out there not tips. winning this competition now. It's all on you. Yeah, hey, isn't it? You. Isn't it a good job that we've entered another microfiction competition, guys? Yeah. Well, you say that, but I actually do feel with Tim's feedback there that I feel a bit more. That's the kind of feedback I wanted from the judges. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually genuinely looking forward to writing the next Cause one. Because I can, I can see what he was saying, and he agreed with us, but then mm. went a step further, saying, "Well." And I think just just that bit about saying it's kind of like it's it's the the gap between bro broetry, <laughs> yeah, poetry and prose. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting as well what he said about trend as well. I thought that that was that was interesting because if you read a lot of the winners, they really they really don't have any sort of big endings, do they? They just sort of. They're very uh, sort of whimsical, and they kind of drift. Yeah, and then you're gone. Yeah, you're out of the story Cause... again. And all the winners are a bit like that. Whereas ours, I think we felt like we needed to. We needed a bit of an impact. And it's interesting yeah. that we don't. Yeah, well, I think that's the thing. That is the trend in mm. TV as well, isn't it? Yeah. When you think about it, everything's box sets these days, and nothing ever ends because <laughs> they're just always after a commission for another series. Yeah. So that's the, the sort of way of things, isn't it? Keep telling a story. It's funny though, actually. We I watched something the other day that um, had a, a culmination mm. ending. 
that wasn't a big walloping mega battle thing. It just yeah. kind of ended yeah. like it would do if it actually happened. And it was quite satisfying, yeah. really. You know, rather than, the, rather than the endless, endless kind of uh, baddie versus goodie yeah. battle that you get in things that was all the rage in the mm. sort of the 1990s films of you know, this me- epic, epic and final battle. Big laugh. At but the it end. just kind of ended. But it's kind of like that. It's the, that great ending, isn't it? The, the end of The Sopranos where it just cuts to black and you have no idea what happened. Um, that's the sort of feeling I, that I yeah. was getting from what he was saying. Mm. Yeah, I always think, it, um, I think I said this in the po- when we were talking about poetry the other week, that it's, for me, it's almost the feeling of rather than kind of throwing mm. something up in the air and a big firework display of an ending, it's just about putting, mm. having something meaningful in your hands and just gently placing it on the table. Yeah. So it is there, it exists. But you've... But it's just Probably very forget where you put it, and then and put down. looking for it later on, and you ask your <laughs> wife, and she doesn't know, and then it turns into an argument. Yeah, that's it, that sort of thing. Yeah, but I thought it was interesting. Like he was talking about our little, our little microfiction pieces, um, and the one thing that struck me was was, and this is a kind of tip for our listeners out there getting ready to write their own stuff, is when I do when I do the next one, is to try and treat it more like a passion than an exercise. Because that's kind of how it felt, wasn't it? We knew mm. we'd never done it before, and we knew it needed to be this number of words, and it had to have this in it and this in it, and it becomes like an exercise to like have you fulfilled these things that you have to do, rather than it being sort of you know something that you're passionate about and uh, something that you care about mm. in any way, so that that feeling comes across in what you're writing. Um, so there's a there's a tip I think for mm. anyone who's going to write their own story. Feel it. Nice, Dave. Yeah. Nice. Getting very deep, isn't he, with his? Check you out today with you. Whiskey and beer and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I don't like yeah, it. Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. Quite impressive. Like it. Passionate, Dave. <laughs> He's passionate. I'm passionate, I'm passionate about winning £100. <laughs> so I think it's. we should probably just say one more time what the, what the sentence is. Yeah, I was about to say that. To put in. Yeah. Here is the phrase you need to include. I'm a bit worried I'm going to say a slightly different phrase than one I said. <laughs> quite a while ago. Um, was it, it it dropped on the floor with a thud? It hit the it floor. Hit the floor. floor. I don't know what I said with last time. Thud. Something about something. We can always use good. that bit of audio anyway, can't we? So <laughs> yeah, that's we'll just, yeah. I'll tell you what, here's the bit from, I'll clip it in now. Here's the bit from before. This one we made earlier. It hit the floor with a thud. That's what you meant to say. There we yeah. go. Perfect, perfect. Well, come on, guys, you've got some work to do. Yeah, we should leave people to it, shouldn't we? Because everyone... Yeah, we should. I doubt there's anyone yeah. left listening now because everyone will have switched off, picked up a pencil and started <laughs> writing. On. Yeah. Um, mm. So we're just really talking to ourselves. Well, if you are still listening, good luck. And, uh, yeah, just keep that £100 in your mind. And if this is your first time tuning in for the for the competition, in my view, um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's brilliant. It's a brilliant podcast. Welcome. Um, welcome. I've listened to some of the episodes before. Yeah. And then we've got some good stuff coming up as well, haven't we? We've got, we've got um, we're going to do a brainstorming session that, uh, about um, doing a big pitch to a TV executive. Yes. So this is a thing, isn't it? Because we've talked about brainstorming and pitches and all that sort of stuff. But I, we thought it might be interesting for listeners to hear a brainstorm session live. Well, um, it might be heavily edited, Who knows? so it's less embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, 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 still, Clips off. yeah, yeah. Okay. Still, perhaps, still to make us sound clever. Was was oh, live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the idea is we take that um, idea or ideas forward, build them into a treatment, pitch them to a real life TV commissioning editor, and um, cry. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the next step is there. Um, take rejection. See the ideas go up on the, the ball chin. Of flames. Have some self realization. Um, yeah. That there's a reason that we've got a podcast called The Failing Writers Podcast. I don't know. Who knows how it'll end? Yeah. Hey, who knows? I think, I think we're, we're doing it. We're doing it for you because rejection is an important part of the writing process, and we are going to take that rejection for you, so you get to experience rejection without yeah. actually being rejected, dear listeners. And then the other thing we've got coming up, which I think does have a certain level of irony, is um, we kind of set ourselves the challenge of randomly posting each other. A piece of literature that perhaps wasn't the best written piece of oh, literature yes. ever, which does yes. feel a bit. I don't like doing it to some extent because, but then I think everyone has a right to have an opinion on stuff. You don't have to be a a brilliant footballer mm. to comment on a football match or an amazing chef to go and have a meal at a restaurant and go, "Oh, that wasn't brilliant. Yeah, that was a bit salty." Something's fair enough. At the end of the day, we might love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. You know, 
They so, might be. They yeah. might be brilliant. Yeah, that Who one knows? sent me isn't. Bad the way, whole yeah. world might be wrong. We're not here to make fun of people unless they're funny. No, no. It's it. There is an element of serious no. discussion in that, yeah, isn't it? Definitely. That w- what one person thinks yeah. is terrible, another person will think is great. Yeah, and a lot of writers. And, um, to be fair, a lot of writers say yeah. you've got to read crap stuff as well as good stuff. And personally, I don't read a lot of like supposedly bad stuff. So yeah, it'd be interesting. Really interesting. Just imagine John walking yeah. through the uh, duty-free airport lounge and <laughs> those books <laughs> goodness me as he's got his like his massive like i don't know philosophy book or something under him. he's struggling onto playing with his complete works of shakespeare that have only just weighed in under the baggage allowance these books don't have any trees in them at all i'm not reading these do you remember that time when john promised he'd read out his tree story and record it do you remember that i remember uh, that yeah hey, i do remember that I, yeah i have started it um, it's been busy. It's been busy. By the time you've finished it, the trees will be different sizes. It's taken that long. <laughs> Deforestation will have reached such a point that no one alive will know what trees are <laughs> anymore. John can't do his story anymore because it's now just a field where cows yeah. are being farmed for McDonald's burgers. <laughs> there's no trees left. Yeah. So there's lots of things to look forward to in the Failing Rice podcast. So yeah, thank you for listening. If you're a loyal, long time listener, thank you. Yeah. And if you're a brand new listener, thank you but slightly smaller thank you but still a thank you nevertheless yeah welcome but yeah make sure if you want to if you want to hear who the winner is when it comes to halloween make sure you subscribe immediately so you don't miss another episode at failingwriterspodcast.com so i think all that remains to be said is enter the competition by sending your entry to failingwriterspodcast at gmail.com i've done it boys that's the email address isn't it yes. well done yes. tom Congratulations. And remember, yeah, that's it. And you need to include the phrase, it hit the floor with a thud. And you could win 100 English pounds sterling. But until then, goodbye. Take care. Bye. Hello. Hello. Where's everybody gone?